All right, what's going on everybody? So <clears throat> in one of my other videos, I was talking about the car that uh, keeps losing its keep alive memory and killing all the monitors. It's that car. So we're gonna kind of get in into it, um, do the diagnostic process and go from there. Some of the things that's already been done to it was a new PCM was put into it because it was throwing the wrong type of monitors for the vehicle. Um, a new battery has been installed and that's about it so we'll go from there and I'll catch you guys up here in just a minute once I get all set up all right so <clears throat> to start the diagnostic process on this one um, I've already done a code scan there's nothing in there to kind of point in any directions and I was able to duplicate the concern because it is losing the monitors so first things first, I want to do just a quick battery test. I want to make sure that the battery is good. Which I already knew that it was because I had them put a new battery in it before I even started messing with it. So new batteries in. Um, next step is I'm going to pull up the wiring schematic for the uh, keep live memory on the PCM. And I'm going to scope that and see if it's dropping out any. All right, let me get all set up. All right, so I went over the schematic. Off of Protoman. And for this PCM, you've only got one keep live power. That goes off of the ECU fuse. It's the only one that goes straight down. Verified the pin number and wire color. And I am currently proved in on that one. On a PCM, I typically don't like to do a back probe on that just because typically the pins are so small that you'll run into issues. So I'm pierced in on that and watching my data using the e-scope. This dropout was caused by me. I'm, I unplugged it and then replugged it back in. So right now I'm just watching for any dropouts. I'm about to go cycle the ignition key a couple times and see what happens. All right, so I had some pretty decent voltage drop. As you can see right here, I mean, dropped well into eight volts. And this right here was actually just cycling the key. I didn't do anything else to cycle the key on that drop. So, see if I can get this to do that again. This is just me cycling the key. So it dropped down pretty good. I'm going to play with this a little bit more and then see if I can get any better voltage drop off of it. All right, what's going on? So next day from the vehicle that I was working on, uh, the Chevy Sonic, um, kind of kicking myself in the butt right now because I didn't follow my own diagnostic process and now I kind of think of what's going on. So the shop originally was saying that the monitors weren't setting properly and then they would clear out. Well, you have some monitors that are set as soon as you start the vehicle so whenever you cycle the keys sometimes they might clear out it's but they can never get the um, evap to set or any of the o2s couldn't run a evap system test either well i should have taken all that in consideration because of this right here and here's another example of why you need more than one scan tool both my altel and my snap-on said that you could do any of the or they were all ready to set as far as the monitors, but I switched to my Maximus 
and as you can see right here in the Maximus it says that this drive cycle this one's disabled 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 which means that you're not allowed to do anything with those so what does that mean well hang on well that means that there's something inside of the computer that's sensing something that's out of place and should and is not allowing you to set those readiness monitors if I would have followed my own plan and went and researched the issue a little bit further I would have seen this so let me take you right here all right so I'm gonna take you right here and as you can see right here this was driving down the road this vehicle actually has two coolant temp sensors you got one that reads the like the engine coolant temp and then the other one inside the radiator well this was after driving the vehicle for almost an hour and a half last night and it never got above 40 degrees and then right now it's still only reading 40 degrees after it's been sitting there so that goes to tell me that I've got a faulty temp sensor so I'm about to go out and test the temp sensor right now I might try and do a bypass to where I can trick the computer into thinking that the uh, temp sensor is reading appropriately and see if it will let me go in and do all these tests if it can good then that's our issue so give me just a little bit I'll get it all set up <clears throat> all right so I followed the trouble tree I'll kind of show you that here in a second so that way you can understand what I'm talking about but I went out and unplugged the uh, coolant temp sensor in the radiator to verify circuit after I unplugged it it went negative 40 which if you were to go off of the the tree it says to turn the ignition off disconnect the sensor um, then it wants you to measure the resistance to ground but it says if you unplug it it should read negative 39 degrees which is kind of what this one reads it is reading negative 40 so what that is telling me is the what that's telling me is that the sensor is not reading appropriately it should have been reading a whole lot hotter than 40 degrees especially after driving for like I said about an hour and a half um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an ohms resistor in there and on that resistor I'll show you which one I'm talking about but find out right here all right so this is the resistance table and it actually says that if I want the sensor or the PCM to see 176 degrees I need to have a 270 ohms resistor in it so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take the uh, my little breakout kit I'm gonna put a as close to 270 ohm resistor as I have in it plug it back up see what my PCM is reading and see if it will let me do any of these service bay tests because if it will then that's going to 100% prove that that sensor is what's causing all of the issues so kind of stick with me and as soon as I get everything hooked up I'll come right back to you alright so I think we have somewhat of success if you look right here I put a 300 ohm resistor in line taking place to that coolant temp sensor and it showed that it's reading 172 degrees so what I'm about to go do is I'll actually start the vehicle let the other sensor warm up let everything go into closed loop status and then once that's done what I might try and do is run some of the self test or the the service bay test on the vehicle see if I can get some of these readiness to set if they do then this is our issue <clears throat> And if you're wondering what it looks like, I'll put together of what I'm discussing. I'll show you right now. So, down here, let's see if I can get you zoomed in. On 
that right there. That's a one thousand, or sorry, a three hundred ohm resistor, and it's actually inside of the pigtail for that coolant temp sensor that's reading bad. So with all that, now my sensor is reading 172. It should allow me to get the vehicle into readiness monitor status, which I'm about to start up here in a second and check. So give me just a little bit and I'll let you know. All right, so this morning I'm actually gonna take you out here in a second. Uh, as you can tell, it's the next day. It started raining and had to stop working on the vehicle. Um, what I did was I actually put both of the wires, wire and harnesses to the one known good temp sensor just to see how everything would read. As you can see, the engine coolant temp sensor and the radiator temp sensor are reading about the same. So what that's going to allow me to do is I'm going to have to do a heat soak. Sorry, I know it's kind of bright. There we go. All right, I'm gonna have to do a heat soak on this vehicle, or sorry, a cold soak, so that way I can try and do the um, monitor test. But as you can see, I've got my breakout leads into the sensor right there. Into that sensor. Break out into the connector, and then it allowed me to actually plug in and connect in to the other harness down here. So down there. So what that's actually doing now is that one sensor is reading for both sides to try and trick the computer into allowing me to run some of the testing. Um, one thing it did allow me to do already which I was not allowed to do earlier, was I could actually run the heater, uh, oxygen sensor heater test. Beforehand, I wasn't allowed to. Now I can. So uh, I got to let it cold soak so that way I can try and do the EVAP test and see if it allowed me to do that now. So thanks for hanging out. Um, give me a little bit, let it cold soak, and I'll get back at you. All right, so I'm pretty freaking stoked right now. Um, I was able to get the vehicle to go into where I can actually run the EVAP system test as well as the oxygen sensor test, which is a pretty freaking huge thing for this vehicle. So what that means pretty much is that all this wiring that I had set up that I'd already told you guys about was the issue. So my coolant temperature sensor inside of the radiator. Oh, hang on, camera error. That sensor is what was causing the main issues. So the shop that I'm doing this for, they're going to be putting that sensor in and hopefully getting this thing for inspection. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and stay tuned uh, real quick. I'll give you kind of a rundown of everything that happened and why you should follow a diagnostic process. Thank you guys. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me on that one. As you can kind of tell, uh, I didn't do whatever, what I told everybody in my previous video to do and that was follow diagnostic process. If I would have followed my diagnostic process, this vehicle probably would have been done a whole heck of a lot sooner. But, you know, hindsight's 2020. As you could tell though, um, if I would have followed mine, I would have caught up on some key things on my initial conversation that I had with the shop to guide me in a direction of the vehicle wasn't losing memory more so as the vehicle was not going into um, ready status to be able to run the monitors. So now that I'm able to get in and run monitors or run the testing, even the service bay testing where I wasn't able to before, that go ahead and that proves that that temperature sensor was the main culprit. Now, whenever you go into the PCM under any data stream, it does not show that coolant temp sensor unless you go into the engine cooling system and then you can see it there. But any of your service bay testing or any of the other stuff, it only showed temperature off of the 
um, the actual ECT, the engine coolant temperature sensor. Um, but once you go in and see what the enabling criteria is for everything, it says that it goes off of both of them. So uh, if I would have just followed my process, this one would have went a whole lot sooner or a whole lot quicker. But thanks for go hanging out with me on this one. And I'll bring you guys along on some more. I've got another couple of diags that I've got in the works as well as just a couple of videos. So thanks for hanging out and have a good one. And always remember, did you diag today, bro? Bye.